time is up on that question. Kesh uh, Nanambridge Smith. Well, um, my question has sort of two parts in it. First is to ask you if there's an intention to conduct a, a review on the levels of energy poverty in the general population and if that will be commenced. And then the second is to ask you about the number of applicants for fuel allowance who were unsuccessful, unsuccessful and refused fuel allowance in 2017, 18 and 19 to date. The reason for the refusals and if you'll make a statement on the matter, please. Minister. 2016, the Department of Communications, Climate Action and the Environment commissioned a review of the level of fuel poverty in Ireland and the study estimated that 28% of Irish households were in fuel poverty because they spend more than 10% of their income on fuel costs. An ESRI study utilising the same methodology was published in June of this year and it's estimated that the rate currently stands at 17.4%. That department also currently participating in a CSO-led project to establish indicators for energy poverty that should allow a more reliable analysis of households that have low incomes and a low BEO rating. And I think this will fa facilitate better targeting of the supports and better measurement of the impacts of those supports in addressing energy poverty. I think it's expected that the CSO will begin to publish their reports from this project in early 2020. In our budget 2020, we included an allocation of 52.8 million for the Warmer Home Scheme, which funds retrofits from those living in energy poverty, and this represents the biggest ever allocation for this scheme, more than double the initial allocation of 2019. We, in our department, increased the fuel allowance payment by two euros to 24 euros and 50 cents per week, and this will increase the annual amount from 630 euros currently to 686 euros, a 56 euro yearly increase with a total cost to the Exchequer of 21 million. And this is going to be funded by a ring-fenced allocation from what is expected to be circa 90 million euros which will be raised from the carbon tax increase. And I think this is the largest single allocation that's directly aimed at protecting our most vulnerable citizens. In 2017, the number of fuel allowance claims disallowed was 21,182. In 2018, it was 22,023. And so far to date, in 2019, it's 15,014. Uh, Deputy Smith for supplementary. Back and let me know the reasons for the refusal. But a number of things jump out at me there. One is the question of fuel poverty um, and how they measure it is really uh, difficult and it's also not satisfactory. I met pensioners yesterday, uh, semi-state workers, some of them from RTE, some from the ESB, who cannot afford to keep their houses warm because of the pension levy that's been maintained on their pension and because they've had absolutely no increase in their pensions since 2008. A separate subject, but it's an, in in an indicator that the levels of fuel poverty go beyond where the uh, measurements are allowed by, by the state or by the ERSI. Um, the, the money that you're saying is being spent on retrofitting is paltry, to say the least. Given that we have a climate emergency, 52.8 million is absolutely paltry. Um, and the increase of €2 Euro will, not, will barely cover the increase in the, in the carbon taxes that these people are facing on their travel and other, um, other expenses they're going to have to heat their homes. I would call that split your head and give you a plaster. But um, I would like you to comment on that and to to tell me exactly um, how you're going to proceed. So just to end the, the previous question, um, the scheme conditions include that only one fuel allowance is payable per household, satisfying a means test and satisfying the household composition test. And we don't actually have a breakdown of exactly why people get refused, but it's one of those three reasons um, that they have to either satisfy a means test, and so if you don't, you don't get the payment. Um, if there's already a fuel allowance payment going into the household, well then there isn't a second one paid into the household. And obviously then the composition of the household used to be uh, a reason why somebody would be refused, and we've changed the household benefits package where now if you have a, another adult living with you in the house and you are a single adult pensioner, that's going to be changed um, in this budget. Um, I think, in fairness, the government in its entirety are doing um, a lot about energy poverty. We are committed to protecting vulnerable houses from the impact of energy costs. I don't agree with your subscription. The increase of €56 Euros in the fuel allowance this year will more than compensate the €45 Euro increase in costs to those house, uh, households on the three lowest percentage deciles. But we have a variety of ways that we're going to address collectively as a society and as government policy over the number of years Thank of people you. who are going to experience fuel poverty. Short, final supplementary. 
going to um, compensate people for the increases in, in, in the carbon taxes. That's, that's another story, and we argue about this on, on the Climate Committee all the time. However, what I think is very clear here is that the, the, the way that the fuel allowance is allocated works against some very, very hard struck people for cash. Now, I have couples coming to me, and I'm sure other deputies have it, who are elderly, who are not well, and maybe two or three euro per week over the threshold that will give them fuel allowance. That, having that fuel allowance would also allow them in to apply for um, schemes to retrofit their homes, to get their attic lags, to get their windows changed. Not having it compounds the fuel poverty and drives it even deeper. And I think we need to look at a wider cohort of the population who fall just a little bit above the bracket that is determined by the department, by the RSI, and by people who, quite honestly, do not understand what it is like to live with fuel poverty. Um, I think last year um, there was a number of people who had come to us and made applications and they were only a couple of euros off um, the payment and I, I have to be honest with you I find that very difficult to satisfy that we're going to stop them from getting 22 euro 50 a week because they're two euro a week or five euro a week over the scheme payment and I think that's really difficult and I actually looked into seeing could we not give them the 2250 a week? Could we knock off the fiver and give them the 70? You know, some way to actually address what I felt was an anomaly. And unfortunately, when you come down to brass tacks, there has to be a cut-off point at some point. And so even if we move the cut-off point, we're only going to create a new cut-off point. Um, and so it doesn't fix the problem because you'll you. always have people outside of the cut-off point. Well, but I do actually appreciate too. that something needs to be looked at, potentially maybe a sliding scale. And I think it would be valuable if we did something on that line this year. Oh, Sorry, uh, Chair. Thank uh, you. Uh,